Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, you can see I have the Gap Plus. This is part three of the series. If you guys missed it, part one and two are up here. You can just click on the playlist for that. Um, if you're not a subscriber, I urge you to subscribe. This is such a great channel. I have a passion for hobby stuff. I don't do it for the money or anything, but I do have a passion for it and I have quality content, so it's awesome. So click below to subscribe. Also, if you're on Twitter, at Dell's Arcade, I'm posting tons of pictures. Some of you have already seen this because I'm posting stuff, but this is a premiere episode. You guys are not gonna wanna miss it, applying all the artwork completely on this. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, so I got my buddy Jason helping me out and we're gonna go ahead and put it back. So this is the one that we laminated in the last episode. Uh, if you want to see that, you can click on the link above, or you can click on the whole playlist. You can actually see the body work that I did at the beginning. This was the Ms. Pac-Man one. Uh, I have a video series on that as well. That was this one here, and we took the guts from this one, actually from this one, put it in there, and then used this one and uh, restored it. So we're going to put it down. Go ahead. And what I'll do is we'll set up the camera so you guys can see it properly, and then we'll uh, resume over here. I should have, you know, I always forget to uncurl everything and leave it overnight. You really should kind of put like, you know, some dead weights like books or something. Something that will mess up the artwork. And uh, get it going. So I'm going to line it up to the bottom because your eye is naturally going to go there on the end of the uh, bezel. You know, to me, I, I've done three cabs now, full restoration, full art packages. And this is by far like the most nerve wracking part to me. It's not the painting, it's not the sanding, the bondoing, or it's <laughs> the committing to putting the art on after you've spent several hundred dollars on an art package. Yeah. You can hold that down if you want to. Yeah. And it, it never seems to make me feel any better. It doesn't matter how many I've done. I gotta go get some. All right, so hopefully I'll get in here without blocking anybody. So we'll make it taut, right? So that's good. All right. And we'll have to like kind of do this. Go for it. Committed now. Yep. I mean, it has a little bit of play, but doing the best. This does have that stuff on the sticky side. See, that's where we bent it. Mm. You can see it a little bit. Yeah, it's coming right out. Yep. And then when you go left and right, that'll also help. Yeah. You know, if you did the wet method, I mean, it would take everything out, but I felt for this, there was nowhere for the water to go. Yeah. So that's why we felt we voted against it off camera. <laughs> so you can see the bubbles here that I'm working out. You guys see that? I mean, this 3M stuff is really, really good. If you look at the back at the adhesive, I should have gotten a close up on that. I'm going to try on the other one, but it actually has like a cross hatch on it that lets the air on this 3M, the way they manufacture the glue is actually, I guess, sprayed on there with this pattern that the air bubbles will, as you're applying it, get pressed right out and go down the channels. It's pretty crazy tech. That went a lot better than I thought it was going to. Yep. See, it's pushing it out. Yep. Here channels. There's a little bit here. That's because the wood is uneven. So yeah. maybe I should have gone a little bit higher. See this? Yeah, but that's fine. I'll take it. That's just getting my crappy fingerprints off. You know, this was a bonus piece that I wasn't even going to put on first I'm going down instead of sideways um, looks good I didn't even know this came with it I had prepared actually they had somebody had scratched her name on it and I figured since I'm doing it I put Bondo on it made it super smooth and then realized there's a sticker for it so there it is let me um, stand it up and then we can um, actually let's lay it on the side let's go ahead and just tack the side art right now sounds good to me all right okay guys so we're giving you the widest shot possible here uh, Jay's actually going to put some wrap attack on it. I feel like I'm a rich person going, hey man, <laughs> you're my maid, clean my crap. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> <laughs> so.
So, put my damn hand in. yeah, so he stopped by. He actually grabbed a System 1 cab uh, for an outstanding deal. I yeah, mean, outstanding. Right. And uh, we're talking like, we'll just tell you, under 1K, and nothing really was wrong with it. With Indiana Jones. So we got an Indy Jones in really nice shape. It was actually a TNT machine. We have some TNT stickers we saw inside uh, where they painted, you know, the outside black and everything. But he's going to undo all that and put the actual Atari art on it and do a restoration on that. And we'll check in with him. I'm going to try doing that maybe an end segment or something. And this is cut to the right size. It's not going to be, normally it has a white trim around here, but it's actually easier to apply this one. Um, I chose to not have that because I wanted white T molding and I felt if this is white too, it would look kind of funny. I really want it to pop. So we're cutting, if you mess up and cut a little bit of that, it's not a big deal because there's at least an inch around the whole thing, at least. All right, so I guess we'll start here. Uh, I wonder if, what it should be off by. Yeah, we're gonna go down. So I'm doing it about an inch. I just want to see what the offset the bleed is. bleed over is. Looks like it's two inches or an inch and a half. So because of that, I'm going to pull it a little more. So yeah, we decided instead of doing tape, uh, Jay came up with a good method that he just uses. Usually he has a yardstick at home. We're using the T-square. We just clamped it because I tried cutting here and putting the tape, but it just didn't really come out right because there's a lot of uh, bleed on there. So we decided to do this. Um, we're going to be just extra careful, but I measured about five inches from this blue line to the bottom, made sure it's five inches across. That way it's nice and straight. And then um, the rest looks okay. And I looked at some pictures online. I didn't really go crazy, but it seemed like this was closer to the top. Um, you could do the opposite and slide it down, but mainly you just want to go by that point right there. So everything's all lined up to that point where it matches up, but it looks like this is kind of almost like Pac-Man curve but it's a Ms. Pack cabinet. So it's a little deeper in, but it fits just fine. Once we do this side, then I'm gonna measure exactly what it is and make the other side match. So, and again, it is really a one man show. You can do this yourself, but why not, right? Yeah, we'll just make sure. And we gotta, we're gonna fold it back on there yep. completely. And you wanna be careful when you're doing this. You don't wanna stretch it, because if you stretch the graphic, it's... Yep. Makes it worse. That's how I ruined my Spy Hunter one. That's good, Jay. Okay. I can pull it back more after. So I'm using a uh, non-exacto knife because my other one was a little dull, as you saw in the last shot. So now you just wet it. it can be generous, doesn't matter. You know, I'm on carpet, so I don't care if this drips on it. It's not a big deal. It smells yeah, good. Rapid tack doesn't stain. It doesn't. Yeah, I'll get some in there. All right, and now I'm gonna do it on this too. I know you guys are like, oh my god, but this actually has a formula, sort of soap and water, that uh, will not let it stick. So let go for one sec. So you can kind of handle it yourself. It's fine. Jay can hold it too. You're gonna do it now, but I'm just showing you. You can do it yourself. You don't necessarily need two people. So you could see where the crease kind of is. Where the backing is still on it. Yeah. And I'm just kind of going forward little by little. So this is going on just fine, actually easier. The whole point for this, I think this is the wet method really is for smaller stuff. When we did a Spy Hunter, we had the seal on the side um, because Spy Hunter actually has art on top of art. It does, yeah. Um, a lot of people think it's one piece, it's actually not. It's actually a good way to tell when you look at them if you if still they're original. See them. Yeah, yep. like uh, Jay and I help out in an arcade in Front Royal, Virginia, uh, called the Fireball Arcade, and the Spy Hunter that we have down there, it's got replacement full side side art um, because it's just one continuous sheet. It doesn't have the insert on top. Let me tell you, I can hear it pouring out on top. Listen. You hear that? <laughs> You might want to mop that up. Actually, I have the micro cloth right here. Um, and it doesn't, oops, it doesn't damage anything, so don't worry about it. It's just soapy water, really. Yeah, but it does, I have to say, this does make it go on much easier, bubble free. Yeah, so I'm going now to the edges. I'm kind of pushing the water that's left in there. You know, you don't want to press too hard. You don't want to cut your artwork either. 
So you so gotta find, you, right here there's a bump that probably a speck of dust got in there or something. So do you know, Slight. on an original gapless, would this have been an insert on top of, like the way we were just talking about? Nope. So I know was, because Buffett has a original that I looked at when we were at, okay. It's completely full side art. At this point, Midway was on board. It's a later game. As you guys know, they released like multiple Miss Pac-Mans. They had one that was uh, stenciled and they had one that was not, that was a decal. So I want to say that this got released at the time where they started doing the decals on Miss Pac. So it was full side art and they were all on board for that. So that's it. I feel pretty confident that that's good. I'm gonna kind of get the edges here. I think everything squeegeed out at this point. What do you think? Yeah, I got I pretty much got it all off the floor. I might need it over here. I have my own, but I'm just gonna go underneath. Wow, that looks nice, smooth. Yeah, this is probably, I wanna say this is easier than cutting that middle piece yes. for laminate. That was like, phew. so now we can take this off. That, yes, you can. Unclamp it, toss it to the side. You know, we're doing the two person method, I guess, but when you're doing this alone, it just takes a little longer, but it's completely fine. Just don't cut the artwork. More is better than less, but you don't want it to go crazy because you got to clean it up. All right, now because this has it on there, yeah, let's go over. All right, so I think that bump that I'm seeing, I'm fooling myself. That's actually the uh, backing. All right, I'm ready to take the rest off. So if you're doing it alone, you just do this. Dave's actually checking a text real quick. It's fine. He's trying to buy a Marble Madness. If you guys yeah. know of anyone um, who has one, he's not looking to pay a lot, working <laughs> or non-working, because, you know, we're good at repairing stuff, and we have a lot of network friends who can do stuff for us. So that's what I'm worried about. It's not a deal breaker. Yeah, just don't let it stick to that. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time this video comes out, there is a possibility I will already. Yeah, he'll probably, yeah. Uh... So I'll spray this again. Sorry, Jay. Oh, I'm good. Sorry. Sorry. I needed to <laughs> clean that spot later anyway. <laughs> All right. It's kind of fun doing the wet method. You guys should try it one time. You know, I was going to do it dry because I'm used to that, but... I chose to not to do that, to be out of my comfort zone. That's how people excel in life. Can't sit nice and comfortable. You gotta get out of your comfort zone every now and then. Yeah, you could let go even, it's not gonna stick. You got it? Yeah. All right. It's, I mean, look, can you guys see that? I'm putting it down, it's not sticking. That's great. Because it's wet. Now it's gonna spill out the bottom. We may wanna grab it, get ready. Get ready, Fluff Boy, for the towel. Because <laughs> it's going to come out here. Hold on, let me get it. Hold on, I just want to make sure. All right, ready? Here we go. Unfortunately, because of the bottom of this. <laughs> do you, are you having fun? No, I'm just making sure it doesn't okay. stick. All right, so now I'm just kind of pushing it out the edge. Looking for bubbles. I don't see any bubbles. So, and if you do, um, you take an X-Acto knife, press it down, it will come right out and you won't even see the hole. They're microscopic, guys. So let's start somewhere where you can't see. Committed now. And I'm just kind of running along the edge. Because it's laminate, it's perfect. Except I say that and now I get snagged. I'm just gonna take that off just to see. <clears throat> and you can see here where there's black. I gotta actually put black paint there. That was from yesterday when we took it out, Jay. Oh, actually it did what it was supposed to. This is actually Bondo here that I see where the laminate is following that path. So it's super sharp though. That's the way I saw Joe doing it. I always refer to Joe because he is the only one who really posted anything online. I must that. have watched his videos a hundred times before I did my centipede restore. 
His Miss Pack ones are really good with the reverse printing. Yep. So they're pretty amazing. Oh, that goes really nice and straight. There's with the something here blocking my hand. I can't figure out what it is. I'm gonna keep going right off. Because that fell there, it almost made me mess up. Almost. There's only good hand grenades and horseshoes. I'm just gonna, it's a little too wet for me here. So I gotta. Wow, dude. Do it again. So can you guys believe this was a Ms. Pac-Man at one point that was pretty much destroyed in Virginia Beach? No. So was, well, was it around no, there? We think it came from Myrtle Beach in North Carolina. Myrtle Beach, that's it. It sat in Virginia for six years, according to the owners that I picked it up from. And that's because of the tag that was on it, right? Yep. Yeah, and the salt water tends to... Uh, it tore up the sides. Do a number on it, yeah. The full side is so much easier. You're being cocky now because we're almost done. And we still got a whole other side, dude. <laughs> I know. I actually like using, like in watching you use the razor blade, I, I may actually I kind of like this. it better. Yeah. yeah. I wonder why Joe uses a razor. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that's better. I think you have a little bit more control. I wonder if he's watching it here. So he can tell us, you know, what he prefers here. Oh my gosh, dude, that looks so great. You agree, guys? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not even gonna go over that again. That just looks too good. Yeah, All right, when, the when last did, part. When I did my mispack, like I kind of nicked it up, up a little bit up here and I nicked it up a little bit down there and they're never going to be a hundred, hundred, and hundred percent. Like there's always going to be slight things in them. Yeah, I mean, look at original art, right? You see yeah. Robotron. They just slap it on there and yep. spray it. And because people do such a good job with the stenciling, some people complain. The purists will be like, "Wait, it's it's too perfect." Yeah. Well, you when know? you think about it, they were cranking out thousands and thousands yeah. of cabs, and they were trying to do it as fast as they could. So, you can actually see the creases where I bent it originally here. I'm trying to get that out. And I do. Yep. Wow. I, you know what? Some people are afraid of the wet method. I'm pretty much sold right now. Yeah, like I I'm think able, I am as well. I'm able. It wasn't yeah. that hard. Right, guys? Yeah. I mean, beautiful. Let's take a look at it closer. All right. So here it is. So here's where I messed up a little bit yesterday. We just put it over the step and it got a little scraped up. I just had to put the back door on. We actually built the back door at Jeff Kinder's. That video you may have seen already. I'm probably going to release it first and you'll see where he built the back door for me and we toured his arcade. But this over here, I mean, oh man, I'm in love with this artwork. Seriously. I mean, the edges came out great. Yeah, it looks beautiful, dude. Yeah. Don't forget to leave in the comments what you think this guy's saying. <laughs> like, what the heck? I'm really curious to hear what you say. And you can see right here, this is where everything came, you know. I mean, it because of the laminate, it was just perfectly, there was no ridges and messing it up. I mean, it's all smooth. Okay, so what we did is we actually took a little break. We let it cure a little bit because we didn't want to flip it over and be sliding it around and then have this thing like peel off because it was wet, but it's completely dry now. I mean, it looks, to me, it looks factory. Like I can't even, Imagine, I cannot wait. We're gonna stick some tea molding on this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over and then we'll just do a time lapse of us uh, cutting it, you know, trimming it, just what we did, putting the wet method, putting it on, and then we'll come back, stand it up, and uh, we'll continue with the rest. We're actually going to take this old control panel that I got on eBay. It actually came in this condition. What I'm going to do is 
kind of just fill in these little gaps here because if you leave these here you're going to end up getting uh, some holes in the artwork so i'm going to go ahead and fill those in again let's just take this outside i'm going to go ahead and resurface it uh, do a quick uh, little thing there and then uh, we'll apply the artwork afterwards okay so we're outside here and i have the panel right here now you could see that it has these indentations these are actually welded in so that the bolts are built in on the other side so um, as opposed to having the bolts on top so of course they're welded in but um, you can see even on the original artwork if you look at some of the machines um, if you press down in there it gets broken and it gets indented i want it to look flush so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to clean this up then i'm going to end up putting bondo in here smoothing it out sanding it down so it's nice and smooth so you can't see that um, previous owner also this is actually a super pac-man panel that i got online you know it came in this exact condition like i didn't do anything to any artwork you can still see some of the artworks here um, normally you'd use a heat gun to take that off but i'm just going to use my um you know my scraper there to just take it out you'll see it'll come off like butter it's actually the wheel that i have for the grinder the attachment it's like a paint remover we'll take that right out and then over here they added a looks like a japanese pattern that's not a hat pattern it's actually a japanese pattern like a sanma they probably had in there um, I got to fill these up as well. I was thinking of putting JB Weld in there so it's a little stronger. But you could also just put Bondo in there. It'll be just fine. Um, I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to fill these in because normally you'd put two holes in there. But these are actually welded on there. They're tack welded as well. And I'm going to use this kind of... Uh, this is a paint remover and a grinder attachment for it. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you have a grinder. It makes, makes it way easier than a drill. Um, I also have this attachment here, which I might or might not use. This is a little rougher here, so this is a little bit scratched up, so I might just use this just to buff it down. And then, um, you know, and then of course the normal um, brush attachment for the drill. And this one here is actually fine. It's fine wire cup brush. There's fine and coarse. You want to get fine so that way. Um, it'll take out all the scratches, it'll be, it'll polish it up. So I'm going to use this first, just to take off everything, make it shine up, take off all the oxidation and all the goo and all that stuff, the adhesive, and then finish it off with the normal uh, drill with this. So let's go ahead and do that. And let me just get my protection on here and then we'll get started. Okay, so it's been 24 hours. We're actually out here now. It cured up pretty good, actually. Um, you can see I already removed one of them here and it, it's pretty much smooth there. I might not even need to bond over it. I'm probably gonna do a skim coat no matter what, but I wanted to show you how I take these off. So, and you can hear my daughter in the background. You know, everybody's home now, so it's a little harder to shoot, <laughs> which is really the main reason I haven't released a lot of videos lately, but. Uh, anyway, you'll hear her in the background, so just bear with me. So it came out really good, nice and smooth. Same thing over here. Let's go ahead and do it. And this one, it looks like there's like a little bit of spaces in here. I didn't quite get it in there, but, you know, we'll fill that with Bondo because I want to fill these things in here to make it smooth. Not really sure what these are here. I'm assuming when you get the leaf switches, they probably lock in these, so I probably won't want to fill those in. 
Um, either way, even if it doesn't lock in, the lip is going to cover that, so it should be fine, plus the overlay, so it should be good to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some Bondo, I have it right here, where I'm just going to take it, mix it, and then go over these here, and then sand it all smooth when I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead, do a time lapse, and kind of just go over it and uh, redo it. Okay, so it's all set. I did some Bondo. Um, it's always better to do more than to less because I hate going over it twice and Bondo does shrink a little bit, technically. So I'm gonna just leave it alone and then uh, let it cure out here. Uh, it should cure in like, I don't know, five to 10 minutes at the most. And it's really, it's about 80 degrees out today. So it should cure really good. And then I'll be able to just sand it. And then uh, at that point I could start spray painting it and doing the uh, inside first is over here and then the outside great so let's let that cure and we'll come back okay so it looks like it's cured i'm going to go ahead and use my 220 grit here on my orbital sander got to plug it in um, i can't stress the importance of wearing gloves because i got some scars here and here from when i slipped and hit it but uh, my hands you know they need to be covered and then of course last but not least would be face protection um, you could use goggles for the dust. I have my glasses on, I think I'll be all right, but um, definitely want to use uh, breathing protection. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on now. Let me just uh, set this on. So, all right, we'll go ahead and do a time-lapse and we'll get this thing sanded. So I have everything here. Um, I took off one of the gloves because um, it actually is easier when you're doing stuff like this to feel with your hand that it's smooth. So make sure it's all smooth when you do it, you know, with one hand. I mean, I'm mainly doing it with my right and it was fine, you know. Um, but if you feel more comfortable wearing gloves, you could always just do it and then take it off and feel it. But there is no, it looks like there's holes in here, but there is nothing here. It feels super smooth to the touch. So this is gonna be perfect for when it's done, so. Okay, so you guys are gonna probably think I'm nuts, <laughs> but I wasn't happy with the finish. I guess over time, as I let it uh, cure, but um, there were kind of little indentations here that I was noticing even with, uh, it was more apparent once you put the spray on. That happens sometimes. You can put Bondo on other spray. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, get this down. I'm gonna use, I believe, 80 grit first just to get the harsh stuff off at the beginning. I'll do it very lightly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use 220 grit um, for the rest of it. This is actually my last disc. So I'll have to make do with that. I have a ton of these, but I really want the finish to be that. And then that way it'll be nice and smooth. I just didn't want to have the chance that, you know, when I put the overlay on it, that there'll still be those tiny little dents where you can really see it in the artwork. I want it to be completely smooth because that's the one thing I hate about the Gapless and the Super Pac-Man artwork is that it has those little things that you can see in the artwork. People who own the original will know exactly what I'm talking about. So I wanted to just make sure it's completely smooth. So looks like I did it pretty good. It's actually really super smooth here. Okay, so I got some iso, isopropyl alcohol. Um, it shouldn't, I haven't seen that it really does anything that de deteriorates it or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead, just use a rag. These are some old jeans I had, I just cut up. Instead of going in the garbage, they're now official rags. <laughs> so I'm just gonna spray it. You could use a tack cloth if you want to. It evaporates so fast that I'm not worried about it damaging anything. That looks good. I just don't want to let it sit there, of course. But yeah, it evaporates almost instantly. So let me go ahead, I'll set it up and we shall spray this down one last time, but it feels really good. Looks awesome. 
and I mean, this is what you're gonna see when you're playing it right here. Two start buttons, fires, and then this here. And I think I have a little surprise. I may not go with the stock red ones. And I think I have an idea because I want it to be unique. This is mine. It's Delusional's Arcade, and it's going to be my, you know, version of Gapless. So great. Okay, so we have everything set up. This is the panel. I actually redid it again, put some more Bondo, um, did underneath as well. And I actually, um, you can see I grinded these off. Um, I didn't really care if they were a little rough. I just sprayed right over them. But the reason I had to grind them is because when I test fit the joystick on here, the bumps were actually um, going into a little bit of where the, you know, the top of the joystick was so that the washer that's in there, because it's actually put underneath, the uh, dust washer uh, would hit some of these. So I ended up just grinding them off. So. No big deal, you know, I left the other ones on the side just fine. Um, so you could see here, first thing I suggest, wash your hands <laughs> because right over here you can see I have dirt. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, these here aren't too bad, they're slightly, you could see like in the light, they're just a little bit, I didn't grind those down either. What happens was when I grinded it from the back, they actually popped up a little bit, but you know, I'm not really gonna see it, I don't really care. It's way better than those other holes that you saw. Um, where it leaves like a big, you know, thing like that. So let me go ahead and just spray it down. You know, just to clean it up a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy. You know, just to get the oils off if I touched it with anything. Um, I could just put it on like this. If you don't have wrap attack, you could just put it on um, kind of just like that and they'll be fine with the alcohol. And you can use like a, like I said, um, a tack cloth to kind of go on it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Now it's been sitting here a couple weeks. I've just been really busy, haven't been able to do it. I've been editing the videos that you guys have seen so far. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's why this thing has been a little dusty. That's why I'm kind of wiping it down, just to make sure. I'm also gonna get, don't forget the edges here because um, you're gonna have to wrap the artwork underneath. So you wanna get this clean as well on the inside. That's why I suggest you spray it you know, some people just want to do the top only, but you definitely want to spray Rust-Oleum underneath as well. Let me actually, you can see the little bumps now in this light, see here? It's not completely perfect, but it feels smooth to me, so I don't think it'll show through the artwork. And I'm not going to do it, I bonded it like twice already. I'm like, you know what? It's not going to be perfect. Um, so, I'm okay with that, you know. It looks way better than it did when this was first uh, taken out here. So as you just saw, <laughs> where I took everything and just stripped it all down. I got this panel, I wanna say I got it for 40 bucks shipped. Maybe if I'm remembering right, I can't remember. It was a little while back. But um, I think that's a good deal. You know, it was already, um, the artwork had already been stripped off. It just had the residue on it. So I just went outside and took it all off with my grinder like you just saw and bonded and painted it. So it's in pretty nice shape. So I'm really happy that I have this and I got a thing like that. I actually have another um, Super Pac-Man panel uh, that I might use for a second one. I'm not really sure what I want to do with that. I might make a second controller because I'm going to wire this from scratch and have uh, a harness on it and everything. I might make the other one maybe a four-way joystick. And then that way if I need to test any, um, you know, JAMA games or anything that are four-way with adapters, I can just pop in the other panel and not have to worry because this one's going to be an eight-way joystick. All right, that's all done. It's looking good. Okay, so this is the artwork right here. It looks pretty good. Um, I did have a little... You can see right here, there's like a, can you guys see that? There's a, if I reflect it, there's like a tiny dent right there. I actually placed my camera <laughs> on that and didn't realize it was sitting on there overnight. I had it on a table. And then the next day I had that little dent. 
that shouldn't really matter. It should hopefully come out. I'm going to heat it up with the heat gun after and see what happens. Um, it's actually not punctured. It's just a little dented there. Um, but that part is going to be, if we line it up here, it's actually going to be on the part that's bending down. So you probably will not see that. Um, so the other thing I'm going to use, I have a heat gun here, which I'm going to um, use. It has like a little nozzle on it. You probably want to use um, something not as strong like a hair dryer, but for me, I'm pretty good at controlling it. I have this nozzle on here, so I pr feel pretty confident I can heat it up from far away and kind of work it in just to get around this curve. Um, you don't really have to do that, but it really helps because um, it'll help it to stick better and not lift up if you heat it up with this. So I'm gonna do that. And the way he said in the instructions, I'm pretty sure he cut it to size here. And this is all gonna get fingerprinted again. You know, I'm gonna clean it later but you have to just align everything to the top. So I'm gonna align it perfectly here. Um, I'm gonna tape it down with some painter's tape right here. And then I'm going to, actually what I'll do is, let me just see, I'll put this probably around there and I'll bend it down once the time comes. But I'm going to put the painter's tape put it down and then put the flashlight underneath so I can kind of give you guys uh, a kind of perspective on, you know, how it looks and everything before you actually commit to putting it down. So let's go ahead. I'm putting this on the edge as best as I can. All right, so that looks pretty good where I'm just gonna hold it down and put it underneath like that. So there's one side and then the other side, I'm just gonna wrap but that looks good. So if you look at the top, it's nice and flush with that. It's kind of a tiny bit off the edge like that. You see that? But I actually made it like that so that it would equal the sides, which have that as well on either side. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and do the test. I'm actually going to put the flashlight underneath. I have it right here. So you can't really see it with this light. So I'm going to shut this light off here on the side. There we go. So now you can see I have the light underneath and it looks good. See how the middle joystick right now, right here, looks crooked? It's actually not. You just have to have the light underneath straight away. If you have it to the side like that, it kind of looks like it's a little off. So yeah, that's perfectly fine. This one is good too. And then this one is fine. These are the start buttons. There we go. And then this one right here, that's good too. Rich at this old game um, was the one who actually um, printed it for Brandon, you know, at Pacific Arcade. So he does some good work and all their measurements all around, I would totally trust them. So now, this is the part that's fun. So you can do two things. You can do it with your hand if you want, if you're comfortable. I'm gonna use a, um, these are from Bondo. They actually are used to put on the Bondo and stuff. Um, I'm going to take this. This is actually industrial strength Velcro. You take the soft part of it the reason you want industrial strength because it really does have really, really sticky stuff and it never comes off. So you just put that on like I did here. You know, you just take a half. It actually comes in a piece, kind of the, the thickness of this here, and then you fold it in half. So you fold it on one side and then you just fold it over like that and put it on the other side. So it's kind of a cheap method. They do sell ones that are professional to do. This one has worked every single time. It's nice and big. I have it big because um, for the side art, which is a lot bigger, you want, you know, to have nice nice steady motion there. So I'm going to use this for that. Again, you don't have to for control panel, but you know, if you don't have all this fancy stuff like rap attack or whatever, um, you could just use alcohol. This is 99% that I got. You could probably use get away with, um, you know, the 70 something percent that they sell like at CVS. This one I just got on Amazon. It's 99% that I use for soldering and fixing boards. So X-Acto knife has to be super sharp. I just replaced this blade. It's brand new. You don't have to get a professional one like this. Um, I just happen to have this around for my hobbies because um, I used to do like um, model kits and stuff. So, um, you know, they're replaceable blades, but you can get the ones that are a little, they're like the normal metal ones. Shouldn't cost you too much in a hobby store. So I'm doing this upside down <laughs> so you guys can see a little better. Um, I'm going to bend it a little more. It's kind of hard to get under here. There we go. Without really touching it, not touching it, but. All right, so I'm gonna take that. And now I have my X-Acto knife. 
I'm going to do the best I can here. I'm going to actually cut this way first, and now I'm going to cut this way. So you can't see what I'm doing really, but I'm basically just slicing off a piece as close as I can to the artwork without touching it. And it's super sharp. You don't want to use sawing motions at all. And I think I'm going to wipe this really quick. If I see like a piece of something there. I think it was paper that flaked on it. All right, so now I'm going to turn it a little bit from my angle here. I'm going to go right in the center. That's where I want it to be. Not worried about it getting bubbles. It should be fine. Um, so now I can take this off, which is great. I'm going like this because my hands tend to fingerprint stuff, so I'm just holding it so I won't have to like get nasty fingerprints on it for now. Uh, Taking off the other side. All right. So you're not going to cut anything yet, you know, with the holes. You're going to do that last, of course. So now you're going to take this, bend it back a little bit, and hopefully that'll peek through. And then you can kind of just remove. You're going to have to peel back a little bit. There we go. I don't want to bend it if I can help it. There we go. So I'm going to keep this on there and use this as an anchor so I won't touch it. So let's turn it this way. I'm just going to get comfortable for me, for what angle I like to do it the correct way. Let me close this blade so nobody gets hurt. And I'll take this out of the way too. And now I'm just gonna slowly go back and forth. And I'm just pulling on the actual uh, backing here to get it off. So now I'm past, this is where the uh, edge is, I'm past there and I'm going to pull the rest off. And this is where the heat gun comes in, where as I, well after I put it down I'm just going to heat it up just to get it to conform a little better. So let's uh, heat it up, oops, I'll heat it up this way, I'm sorry I'm getting in front of the camera but I want to get done right. And I'm just gonna stick it right there. That bend is kind of a pain here. So I want it to be nice and uniform here. I think that's good. That's there. So this is probably the hardest part of the panel, <laughs> is the front. The top was really easy to do, which is why you want to do the top first, because you don't want to do this and then the top's all crooked. All right, so that looks good. And the, uh, it's actually not hitting the artwork, it's hitting that metal piece. But I'm gonna heat this up real quick with this controlled. Okay. Press it down some more. All right, that looks really, really good. Let's do it again. Okay. no bubbles at all. That's great. All right, so I'm going to move it this way and use my squeegee on this part just to make sure it's all done. Yep, I heard some bubbles there. That's why you want to do it. 
I'm gonna get these all out here. And let's see, that looks good too. And he said if you do encounter air bubbles, like I have one right here, I can see. I'm trying to get. Um, you just take a, the edge of the exacto knife and, and just pop it. It's 3M material and you won't even see it. So, you know. But these curves, you really, they're really printed flat, right? So it's really hard to get rid of those uh, anomalies there. And I think the fact that it's black really does help it. Trying to get this last one out without breaking it. Let me heat it up a little bit here. Okay, let's see. I'm going to actually use my finger here. Yeah, the finger works way better to get these bubbles out. Because you're not tearing anything. Yeah, this bubble will not come out. It's right near the edge, too. So I'm going to try it. I'm not supposed to lift it, but I felt it was right on the edge. Yeah, so now it's out. There's one right there I cannot get out. So I'm probably going to... Well, actually, no, it's in. It's good. It's just not sticking as good. So I'm going to use my thumb here. Yeah, so there. We're really good now. I can feel it. It's awesome. All right. So now that that's done... This is the part that's going to be a pain. You know what? Because it's like to have it go on there. See how it just springs back up like that? I wonder if I should just cut it straight away or... Yeah, I'm going to... I'm just going to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on here just to get it molded correctly. And have it like bend the way I want. Like this. Just to kind of train it. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put the heat gun on there. So now I'm just training it to put it on there. All right, so it is sticking. But I just don't want it to lift up, you know, later on. So I'm going to heat it up. Here we go. Heat it up some more. And let me see if I can turn it to you guys. I'm gonna move this slightly. And so I'm basically just doing that. And I'm trying to get the tip only on there. And then that should do it. I'm not gonna have this heat gun anymore. And even with that piece of wood, I still burn my, uh, <laughs> this thing here. It's a little melted because I was shooting in that direction. That's fine. Looks good. Um, I'm going to trim this off right here. There's like a rounded edge. Can you see that? Uh, let's see if we can see this. See this right here? It's like a rounded edge. I'm going to kind of follow it. this side. All right, that's nice and cool now, so I'm going to shut it off. And I'm going to put this to the side so I can actually put my artwork down. There we go. And I'm just going to take this and trim it as well. I have to kind of see underneath to do it though. All right, there's that.
Don't be afraid to cut because this thing is super sharp and it will look beautiful when you're done. <laughs> so that looks really good. That looks really good. It fits, I mean, perfectly. I can't, I mean, I'm blown away. I thought I'd be trimming off like this edge here and I don't have to at all. So I'm just worried that this isn't gonna stick right. So I'm pressing it down with my nail just to get it on there with the soft side of my nail. So not being harsh here. Look at that. All right, let's clean it up. Some simple green, well not even simple green, sorry, wrap attack. There's some dirt there. Let me take this out of the way. And I'll use my cloth again. Wrap attack has this really cool smell. Some people probably hate it, but it smells nice. <laughs> Way better than uh, simple green. Simple green makes me sneeze, but it works good, so I have it. So there are a couple bubbles in the front here that I'm gonna try pressing down a little bit. They're really tiny. They're really, like you can't even see them. When I press them down, they actually stick and there's no bubble. So I'm wondering if I need to puncture it. But if you do have one, you can kind of just do this and you, know, you stab it like right there. I just stabbed it, can't even tell. And then you just go over it, press down. And you're good. This is where the dent is, by the way. You can't even see it. <laughs> so it worked itself out. Looking great, look at that. Wow, that looks really good. You can kind of see a little bit of the bolt, slightly like right there, where they had, where they had covered up one of the ones they cut, and maybe over here and there. But for the most part, it looks really good. So now that it's all clean, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the holes. So you can, if you want, I mean, I know basically where they are because of the artwork. Um, so I'm not gonna bother lighting it from underneath, but if you're really nervous, just light it from underneath like this. Like I can see it right here. And I'm just gonna cut like a little uh, plus symbol here. That's the way I like doing it, even though that looks more like an X and a plus. These don't have to be as neat, so don't worry about it. The center is really what you gotta go nuts on, but this one here, um, it's gonna have the lip of the fire button, so. And then if you look underneath, that's where I have them. One, two, three, four, five things I have to cut out. So I'm gonna start with the hardest first. Um, I think actually it might be the easiest because these have these little Look on the back here, they have these notches. Can you see that? They're like these tiny little things right there on the edge, I guess, to hold the buttons in. You know, that the leaf buttons actually have those on them. This one doesn't have it, so that's probably the easiest one to do. These, when you cut them, they're gonna actually stop on there. But like I said, if these are a little more sloppy because of those, the button will cover it, so it won't matter. It has like a lip, so. This is the one that you want perfect because the dust washer is on this side, not on the outside, so you're going to see this. So let me do that first because I want my knife to be the sharpest here. And I'm going to reposition. Let's see. So that's it right there. So I'm just going to kind of follow along. I don't know why it's not. It's like really sticky. I think it's just the angle I'm at. Let me grab that from the bottom. So you just cut out each little quarter. It's pretty easy. So it's just the angle that you got to get at. That's weird. So let me uh, kind of get in here. I usually just follow along the edge like that. Cut all around just like so. And that's it. I got that one on one shot. But if you don't slice it like that, it for me, it just gets in the way when I'm cutting. So I don't want that. It looks good. That's good enough. Cool, so um, let's stick in a test button and see how it looks. 
So the fire button, is, can you see the little dents right there? I'll show you a little closer up right there. Can you see that? Those are the two um, side things that you want that fit in there. See that for leaf buttons? Because these are leaf. So those fit right into those little slots that you saw right there. So that's in perfectly. Okay, so that looks good. That's how it's supposed to look. And then the white button, which I'm going to put on the side, go right in here for the start. I can't believe this is actually seeming real now. <laughs> but uh, here's the other one. So there it is. That's how everything looks. It's going to be awesome. So here's a little twist I was talking about. Uh, let me see if I have them. I already took these out. Okay, so I got to figure out what I want to do with that. Not really sure yet. I have all the grommets and everything. We're going to rebuild the joystick together where I'm just going to put these in. Or one of them in, actually. Um, but the thing that I want to do, I think that's going to make it pretty unique to be mine, right? Not only did I go with Pacific Arcade's artwork, which is a little unique, but I'm going with these. These are... the red, you know, buttons you see like on Williams games. Um, I think I'm going to do that. What do you guys think? I don't know. Should I? I think it'll look pretty badass. I'm actually going to see if I can uh, light them dimly from below. I'm going to install some uh, bulbs that I got as well, which I can put underneath. So instead of having the typical fire buttons that you see there, the fire buttons are going to be, you know, like I said, the delusional special <laughs> to be a little different. So what do you think? Does that look good with those buttons? And then picture them being lit up uh, kind of like this from underneath. There's one. Probably not as bright, but you get the idea. I'll turn it off. That way, when you're in the dark, I just turned off the light here. When you're in the dark in the arcade, I mean, it looks super bright, but it's probably going to be more like that, like very dimly lit. Or like that, you know. But that's way too bright. There's no way I'm going to have it that bright. <laughs> it's just the light. Let's see if I can get a smaller one here. Yeah, so I think it's going to look pretty badass. You know, it's my spin on it. It's my custom panel. And uh, I just got to figure out how to install with the harness. I'm building a custom harness for this where I think I'm going to run a 5-volt uh, line or a 12-volt line. I got to figure out what I want to use to light these up. But... And I feel, I'm going to say, I'm trying to feel the difference on them. If it feels weird firing it, I'm not going to do it. Let's see. These feel a little more solid. I'm trying to get that to sit in there. There we go. So let me go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put them both in now. Put that on there. I'll face it this way. So these are brand new leaf switches. Um, I got these from Mike's Arcade. They're actually 3D printed, and you can remove this top part. So if you have, like, a uh, different size that you need, you know, it's fine. For these, um, you know, they're the, are these the long ones? I think they're the long ones. If you have the shorter ones, um, you could take this off and then fit them in just, just fine. But I like that he had this option. I thought it was really cool. You could tell they're 3D printed, but they seem pretty strong at that point. Um, all right, let's go ahead and put this one in. This one, because all the harness is over here, I might um, turn it, maybe like that. You know, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But uh, let's see how they feel. Wow, that looks really nice. So there's this one. I mean, it feels about the same. This one feels a little higher. These leaf buttons and they match this a little better so maybe I'll scrap the idea of using these I'm not really sure but looks pretty good I just got to figure out what to do so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna clean the control panel and then of course um, you know I'll probably save another episode for the wiring where I'll have the entire wiring of the cab with the JAMA harness in there or the whole block and then me building this actual uh, you know control panel uh, harness which I have to build from scratch which is going to be pretty good I'm going to repin it and everything build the connectors 
and uh, do all that, but it looks great. <laughs> it's so cool. Okay, so at this point, we did not have the front piece to put on. Um, so in the meantime, Jay and I are kind of killing time uh, by putting, you know, we were really excited to see everything together. So we decided let's put all the hardware in, get the control panel on, see how it looks. We can see there's the bezel, right, that's in there. Uh, we also put the top piece in as well uh, to put the marquee in, so the top and bottom brackets. And then uh, through the magic of editing, you'll see I actually have the piece and I'll apply that. So you will see that in this episode along with the team moving. So let's go ahead and see that right now. Okay guys, now it's getting a little crowded down here. <laughs> Each tool that I bring, like I brought that monitor on the right, I was trying to size the back to see how uh, I would go about putting the shelves and the power supply in and all that stuff. And I brought my compressor down. Um, what I'm gonna do, since I already have this compressor out, I'm actually gonna use a compressor, um, one to kind of staple in the beginning of the um, T-molding on the top of it there, and probably on the bottom. And then in addition, um, I'm gonna use it to do that plate right up front. So let me go ahead and position myself you know, I'm gonna actually look on my other machine to see where the staples are from factory, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do it on that one as well. So I'm gonna install two of these. This one's gonna be one, and then the other, my Galaxian is missing one, so I'm just gonna pop it on there. So yeah, I'm gonna put it there, and then the way I'm gonna do it, I believe, let me just double check on mine. Uh, looks like there's one in the center, on the sides, okay. So there's one on the center here, two on the center, two on the sides, and then two right here. So there's one, do another one here. Not too close to the edge because I don't want it to crack or anything. But it's going through the laminate and everything. It's not gonna make a difference. All right, so these kind of bow out a little bit, so I'm gonna get those two. In between, approximately. I'll go back up here. These things are great. They're actually not too expensive at Harbor Freight. That's where I got mine. I got this compressor for 60 bucks, tax and everything. Got it on a sale. Um, so that's good. So that's all set. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go on my Galaxian now. And this one didn't have any artwork on the front when I bought it. And uh, I think it was painted over again. They did a really good job. Um, I was thinking about getting artwork, but if I get brand new artwork, it's gonna be really bright and vibrant. And then the sides, you know, it's a survivor where it's not as bright and stuff. So I'm gonna leave it alone and just put this on here just for the heck of it. All right. All right, let's slide this back in. And then uh, I wonder if I should work on the back door too because the back door needs some stapling. Okay, so I have the back doors on the side here. This is the original door it came with, believe it or not. Um, it looks like it's some sort of, uh, I don't know what they call this, I guess press board. It's the kind where they glue like slabs together. It's supposed to be really strong, um, but it's just a back door. So I guess it was just scrap somebody had. They literally just spray painted over this texture <laughs> or not even, they just roll it. Um, and it doesn't have any vent holes or anything. So I'm gonna get rid of this. You'll see a big difference. <laughs> Jeff and I cut it like you saw in the last episode and I gave it a quick coat. I gave it like, Maybe two coats on this side, maybe one, I don't even remember, with spray paint. And then this side I spent a little more time, but still, you know, it could probably use another coat, but it's a back door, you gotta remember. Nobody really cares. <laughs> so, um, you know, we cut this out with the router and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this over it. And what I'm gonna do, you'll see here, it should fit just fine. 
I'm just going to cut, all you have to do is cut a square out. And then once you do that, um, you just staple the square around it on the back. And then when you put this in there, this is actually the back of the door. This is the inside of the door. This is the outside. You want to put it on the inside so it kind of looks like this. So it looks nice and factory. And what's cool is that this is already painted. It has like this nice coating on it. It almost looks like, I don't want to say powder coating, but it has some sort of spray that's on there that just, um, you know, I don't know. It looks like it was dipped into something. But anyway, it has a nice coating on there that's black. It's like satin black. Okay, so I have the door here. This is actually the outside of the door. It doesn't matter which side you measure on. But uh, again, these are gutter guards. They're, I think they run for like three bucks for this whole thing at Home Depot. And it's a dead match for the original um, grating that you see like the metal on your um, back door. So this is all done from scratch. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this edge right there. And I'm just gonna measure probably right there. I'm just gonna mark it. And once I do one, um, you know, you can just do the rest also. So it doesn't have to be that much bigger. I'm going to cut it right there, approximately. So once you mark it, I'm going to cut this all the way through. All right. So I'm just going to line it up as good as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, just so all four sides are even. I'm going to make sure I'm on the right side. Yep, that's not, this is the inside, so... That's it. You just staple in there as best you can. Well, that one didn't go in too good. Sometimes it hits the sides as it goes in. All right, so I got that one out. And then you just put it in. Good to go. So um, actually, I'll put one here. I'm going to put it in the center. Oh, that one didn't hit right. Put it in the center because I don't want people pushing on it and then this whole thing bowing in. So, All right, this one didn't go right either. I couldn't find my pliers like right here, so I just quickly took it out like I did earlier with a scissor. It's fine. Do what works. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the rest here. And then we'll uh, come right back. So here's how it looks. Um, you know, just did that. And I also, like I said, I pounded these in just to avoid any sharp edges. So they kind of go into the wood. Um, but you just do that side. You do that side and all four of them. Pretty easy to do. And it's like $3 for that. And it looks beautiful. You don't have to paint them or anything. So I'm going to turn this around. We'll put the door on. And then I'll give you another look on how it looks on the outside. All right. So that's it. Put the lock in. You can see how beautiful this looks here. Nice, it looks totally stock, you know, but it's painted black. Here's the one down here. And then that one over there. So, cannot beat it. Looks awesome. I mean, it's only a back door, right? You gotta remember. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start on the top. I actually cut the big thing they gave me in half. And then one is gonna be one side, one's gonna be the other. If I run out, it's gonna be underneath because I'm not sure if it goes underneath, I can't remember. Um, it might just stop at the bottom there. But uh, hopefully it'll go underneath so I can staple it. Right here, I'm gonna do the same thing where I just knock a couple staples here. Um, you know, I could glue it, but um, I always stapled it. You know, it looks okay, it's not too bad. So I will start on this side and then what I'll do is I'll turn it and continue so you guys can see the rest. So there's one. And there's two. That's good enough for me. But hopefully this will be okay. I have my glue gun standing by. Just in case I need it. <laughs> and if it feels really loose, like where it, like this is really secure, it feels great. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and glue that in there. Oops. It's mating a little bit with the Galaxian in the background. Like I said, it's a little tight down here. But you know, I felt it's a nicer area to do it in. So this to me usually comes up a lot. So I'm wondering if I should glue it in there because it seems a little bit loose here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You know, I really don't want this coming out and it looks terrible when it does. And I'm never changing out the T-molding. It's going to be white. Some people suggested purple. 
I'll be honest, I looked, I checked to see, I have a whole bunch of stuff, see how it looked on it. But I really wanted white to kind of make the, make it be just like the edge, you know, of a real gapless. Will this go in? Yeah, it's a little loose. I'm gonna glue it in some more. This just seems a little wide to me down here. The other side I redid, but who knows, I may need it on the other side too, I'm not really sure. You could always put tape on here if you want to, but to make it a little thicker. I'm not doing that. Sometimes I do it with the round part, on these round parts here, where this really won't get it. That looks good. It's not gonna come out. And then now I have to cut that down there. Looks good. Probably off camera at this point. So yeah, let me, um, let me get another angle. You know what, I'm actually gonna do the other side first and then I'll do both at the same time, that way <laughs> it'll be easier. So that's all I put on was right there. You can get this out of your way, but that's the cage. Put it on there with the nuts and uh, that's gonna hold the coin door. And then once I put everything else in. So it's important that I have that installed because I'm actually trying to measure out what I'm gonna do in the back. Typically you put the power supply back there. Um, but since I'm building a whole block, I might put a piece of wood and actually have that underneath here. That way I have more room back there for all the boards that I wanna put in um where we have everything slide in you know so i might go with putting gap place on the side because it's the original board and then putting the additional boards there with the multi-switcher on the right not really too sure might work a little differently i might build a shelf for it not really sure uh, but we're working that out now um you know mike and i and he's really good with 3d printing so we're going to come up with a solution that's really cool um that allows me to open the back door and swap it and then at the same time I can access it. I want to be able to access it from here where I can actually put a board on a shelf or something here um, and then just quickly put it in for testing purposes with a spare JAMA connector because it's an eight way switcher. So uh, that's my plan. So we'll see. Uh, you know, I just have to think about it. I don't want to rush. So I'll figure that out, you know, by the time we do the wiring episode. So, all right. So let's add a couple more things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in the glass. But uh, this is it right here. I'm just gonna place it down, then I'm just gonna lift it to be in there. And I did buy the stuff for underneath. I'm waiting for it to come. It's like this foam piece. We'll put that on when we do the wiring. Uh, but it protects the glass a little bit. Clamp down this side. Clamp down this side. And then this one actually isn't pressing too hard. It's nice and soft, so. What I'm gonna do actually, let me see if I can try to light up the marquee a little bit so you can kind of get an idea of how it's gonna look. There's no fixture in there. I'm gonna do that in the wiring episode, but for now, let me just take that out. I'm gonna see if I can light it up here. Yeah, so there it is. I mean, you know, it's gonna have a nicely evenly lit marquee with the light there. Um, but for now, you know, we do have this one here and the, that back thing looks beautiful too. That's, I didn't even know that came with the kit. He actually threw it in and it looks beautiful. I like how it looks. And then my fire buttons, which will light up. And then of course we'll back it up here. The actual uh, unit itself. Okay, so yeah, this is it. This is how the front came out. I think it came out great. You know, the uh, 
bolts and everything. I had a little trouble on the left, like I said, but it came out pretty good. This came out great, the kick plate. We installed it. I'm in love with this artwork. It's just so great. And here's the uh, marquee if you want to check it out. It just looks so good. You know, it has everything like the original. It even has a signature of the guy who made it right here, Tony Ramuni. So it's awesome. And then there's the other side here, which says manufactured under license by Bally Midway. And uh, white tea molding. And then here are the sides. I mean, the white tea molding I think was the right choice. I think it just sets it off. I think it's awesome. Then the new back door. And then if we turn it around here, I'll kind of try to get this side. And then we'll do that as well. So there you have it guys, Gaplus. If you guys like what you see in this channel, I urge you to subscribe. I have a lot of content that I like doing. I just really enjoy the hobby. You know, I'm not doing it for any money or anything. Um, you know, I appreciate what you guys do sometimes in Super Chat. That's really cool. But if I do get anything, it goes right in the channel. You know, whether it is buying, uh, usually it's equipment based stuff that I get so that I can give, deliver high quality content to you guys. Um, I'm probably going to upgrade, hopefully, either now at the end of the summer or probably at the end of the year by Christmas. Maybe I'll wait for sales, but I'm looking for a 4K camera. I kind of have my eye on a, on a nice one that's uh, really good. It's going to be a great camera and uh, you know, it's, it's going to be portable and stuff so I can take it with me to ZapCon next year. If there is a ZapCon next year, we'll see. <laughs> but uh, follow me, you know, I have a playlist for ZapCon. You can see it here if you want to check it out. That place is amazing. A lot of great people out there too. That's really part of the 50% of it is the people that you meet out there. So uh, follow me on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram or on Twitter, it's at Dell's Arcade. You will see, I have posted pictures of this, of the completed project as I go. So um, you will see that ahead of time. You know, that's what you get for um, kind of following me on there. I try to be faithful and show you stuff as I go and I get suggestions from people if I change things. Somebody suggested I do purple here and then I kind of tried it. I didn't really like it. I think white is perfect because again, it's supposed to have the white on the side, the little trim, and this is kind of an homage to that. So I think I made the right choice. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments, subscribe, smash that like button, all that good stuff. Pass it on to your friends, retweet. Okay guys, I'm out. I will see you guys next time when we're doing the wiring episode to put everything in there and we'll get this game going with that multi-kit. Take care.